Welcome back to episode 13 of our detailed Life is Strange analysis, where we're going to try and learn everything we can about the techniques they use to humanize and dehumanize Frank. So we're going to be frank about Good Frank. Lord, bacon. I'm ready to nosh again. I like this whole conversation. It makes Frank feel very human while also feeling like a scumbag. It's very clear that he is in love, but uh, it doesn't make him a good person. And uh, I think that that works very well. This is a very well put together bit of dialogue. And I really like that very initial blocking the body language that Max puts out. Because she looks beautiful in them and you look like ass. Aiming a gun doesn't make you any sexier. Grab your keys and let's check out your RV. Let's not. You fucking creep me out. <laughs> no keys. So I'll be honest, uh, that sounds pretty reasonable of him. <laughs> he sounds mostly like he is head over heels in love with Rachel. And uh, just happens to be kind of a horrible person in addition. Not cartoon villain horrible, just kind of horrible, you know. Let's go ahead and talk to this crooked cop. There she is, Super Maxine. That's your new nickname around the bay. Sorry, but you did earn it. We're all real proud of you for helping Kate down. Thanks, Officer Barry. I was just lucky and right on time. Kate is who counts. I'm glad you're representing Blackwell Academy. So I like that little head motion he did. Um, I don't know if you remember Mass Effect, especially Mass Effect 1, where all of the men had the exact same way that they would end conversations and they would just kind of stare straight ahead and then move their face, move their whole head off to portrait and walk straight off screen. Super creepy. This game avoids that. Uh, characters have pretty good eye contact and eye movement in general. I thought Nathan Prescott represents Blackwell. Well, don't make me backwash this bacon. You know what the press got. It's pretty clear that she didn't know how the cop was going to be delivering the line leading up to that line, but that's okay. Prescotts are working on some new big land deals. Mr. Prescott helped out my family once a while ago, so I made a deal with him that I can't seem to get out of. Man, if I could get one instant replay in life. Theme dialogue. I better finish my breakfast first. So now we're going to pretend like everybody in the universe knows he's a crooked cop. But in this case, I don't really care. It's not like she's trying to establish a rapport with him or a relationship. She's trying to pump him for information. So for me, that makes perfect sense. Um, she can be as fake as she wants with someone that she's trying to pump for information. All right, Mr. Cop, I guess we have to pump you for more information. She is. Thanks. Sir. So we are going to go ahead and accuse you of being a corrupt cop. Did you know that everyone in town knows well, that you're a corrupt I cop? I rumor you were working for the Prescott family on the side. Jesus, doesn't this town ever shut up? I don't blame you for getting extra work. Look, sometimes I check up on the Prescott family to make sure they're doing all right. I like the way that uh, uh, that uh, Chloe's mom back there keeps ducking in and out of the frame. I think that works pretty well. So there are a couple of moments in here which are very much like the parts of uh, Phoenix Wright that I don't like, where you've got to remember to trigger the final thing to the thing you thought was obvious before the thing you thought was obvious becomes obvious in game. But that's Rachel. not too bad. Uh, whatever the fuck. Uh. Oh look. Now we can use that dialogue. I heard your dad hired a local cop to keep an eye out on you and Frank Bowers. Now, if you were playing this for the first time, you may be going back and forth considerably more. Or, you might get it right right away, because it's not that unclear. These know better than to knock on me. Do they? I hope that means Frank won't get busted. Eventually, he will. Guy's into some freaky shit. He told me once he took a weird blood oath for Rachel. Uh, forget I told you that. Seriously. Now get off my crack, whore. Keep your pie holes shut. Rachel! Uh, whatever the fuck. Uh... Weren't you supposed to keep your mouth shut about the blood oath Frank took for Rachel? Blood oath? Who? What the fuck? I never told anybody about that freaky shit. 
Besides, everybody knows Frank is a liar and a loser. Even Rachel did. Yet Rachel Amber hung out with him more than you. So? Rachel wanted Frank's stash. She let him take pictures, then he carries around... Oh, yeah, that's right. We're supposed to talk about the photo, not about the blood oath. <sighs> Still, the mood here is pretty good, and I like the fundamental idea of pumping vari uh, a variety of uh, targets for information. Uh, Max's special power definitely gives this a special flair, but this could be pulled off in any investigative game. I like that subtle little um, nervous motion she does. <laughs> you know I saw that photo Rachel gave you. Uh, uh, how do you know about that? Huh? Chloe, right? She just told me that one of Rachel's favorite pictures was the one she did for you. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. I like this bit of conversation, to too. Wait, wait, let me, let me find it. Here, judge for yourself. Yep, she's super pretty. Now, can we take this, do you think? Or what are we going to have to do to get Frank to let us take it? I'm afraid I'll have to take oh, your we'll keys just take now, them. asshole. You did not just do that. Give me back my keys, bitch. Give me my keys now. Now the interesting things about interesting thing about this is he'll she leave this stuff out. Chloe. You don't have to keep rewinding if you don't want to. How interesting is that? I don't think it affects anything. Let's go ahead and save Alyssa from being bullied. Oh my gosh. How how much how horrible are those bullies? Oh, well. Let's have you move back half a step, Alyssa. Oh, for fuck's sake. Alyssa, watch out! Quit thinking, Max. <laughs> sure. Hey, Chloe. We are super good here. I should have known. The amazing Spider Max. I couldn't have done it without Frank. Now let's get in and out. You'll need this, Max. Why are you giving it to me? So that I can choose whether to On kill the mark, dog or not, I guess. Set. Throw! So, if we throw it towards the road, the dog gets hit by a car. Um, I've never actually gone that route far enough to know if the dog actually dies, but I'm not gonna kill Pompado. Pompadou. Get the treat, treat boy! I think we just made that dog our bitch. Get it? Now we can snoop in peace, but let's not waste time. So this is another investigative scene, and uh, this RV does have enough down. density density to keep it up. So this feels like a pretty good scene. I'm not sold on the fact that you're not doing anything to focus. Uh, the lights, you know, using yeah. your cell phone light really does help to force the player to a, direct their attention piecemeal. Issues, Whereas when it's really well lit it's like this, so you can just soft. look around willy-nilly, um, and it doesn't give you that, that kind of focus. But it's still oh, pretty good. Cruise everywhere in this bad boy. Can you see us heading down the coast of Big Sur and beyond? You want this, Chloe? Yes, we'd be tearing up the highway. Chloe, and let's just go to Vegas. I'll, I'll win us a couple billion dollars, uh, and then rewind time. And uh, we don't have to have this. We'll get a real one. One that uh one that's not full of Frank. Still it was a great conversation. So we're supposed to look around. You here. scope the area while I hack his computer for info. Searching like this uh is very different when you have a companion making snarky comments alongside you. I think it was a good call to distract her by having her focus on something else so she could make occasional snark conversations without ever needing to actually be aware of what we are doing. That allows us to do all of our contextual stuff however we want, but still be supported by some fun throw-in dialogue from her whenever the need arises. Crappy 
It does make it feel a little bit less dangerous, though, since, well, she's there to back us up if we ever needed it. I could pry this vent open with the right tool. Oh, secret. There's another vent right there. You can uh, go ahead and, and use either one to get the ability to pick no up the secrets. tool. This kind of staged... Um, oh, I like that, the way the camera zoomed out for a moment there. This kind of staged Whoa, uh, searching is fun because it lets Stop you... It. Um, it lets you interact with this different items in different ways as you learn more. And I've said that several times now. This game is really good about giving you simple options, and then they get more nuanced as you revisit them. Now let's see what's in this vent. Oh, I broke it. Curses. Nothing here. What can I do? All right, I can control time. One of the little things that bothers me a lot in this game is that we don't actually follow the rule about when we rewind time, we keep our inventory as it is. Uh, we almost always get our inventory screwed up when we rewind time. And that's, um, it doesn't make any sense and it works different ways depending on what any given puzzle needs. And to me that is a real weakness, but what can you do? Oh man, Rachel and Frank's dog. I don't know if I should be touched or disturbed. So this is Rachel Amber, and this is how she writes. So she's pretty normal. I mean, uh, she's not some kind of super smooth genius. She's not socially perfect. Uh, and every time you see something from her, it's pretty clear that she's just, just another one of these small town girls who's trying to uh, make her way. I'm glad Rachel got to drive this beast. She looks genuinely happy. Does she? Okay. Rachel really did hang out with Frank. I'm learning more about Rachel than I want to know. Hmm. Trouble in paradise. Here you go. I'm a Leo, and we don't look back. So we've been physically collecting evidence for a while now. We physically got all the documents from the principal's office, and now we're physically taking documents from Frank's car. Why didn't she say anything? Because she knew how you would react. And she wasn't much of a friend, huh? Just another person who shits all over me. Why does everybody in my life let me down? My dad gets killed, you bail on me for years, my mother gloms on a stepfucker, now Rachel betrays me. Chloe, Rachel is missing. Nobody betrayed you. Bullshit! You totally defended Step Stalker! Fuck everybody! Chloe! I did that so that he can kill a bad guy for us. You put his keys on the roof? I didn't notice that before. That seems like it'd be tough. So here we are with Mad Chloe. Let's see how long it takes her to calm down. Chloe, you can't keep blaming me and everybody for everything wrong in your life. It's so not fair. So I don't know if you noticed, and but somebody, Chloe's got a slightly different facial texture now than she did this morning. I like the, um, I like this dialogue sequence pretty well. Uh, it sometimes feels a little bit forced, but overall it feels pretty good. It's got just the right amount of personal drama to make it feel sharp without making it feel too melodramatic. It's just life. Shit happens. It's nobody's fault. Blah, 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 as Mr. Jefferson would say. You did saying. not just quote Mr. Jefferson. And, and Kate Marsh. Yes, Kate Marsh almost killed herself. Such sad, okay? That doesn't make me feel any better about my fucked up life. Get it? So who do you most want to blame? My fucking dad, of course. Hello? You blame William? That's really? her dead yes, dad. Yes, I do. Damn right. He chose to go out that door and leave me forever. Chloe. Your dad didn't choose to leave you. I know that, Max. My mom actually blames herself. 
just because she wanted a ride home from work. Sometimes even I blame her. No, you don't. Yes, Max, I do. Do you know what it's like to wait for your father to come home when you're a kid? And he never does? No, of course not. But I was with you that day. It was just a terrible accident. I wish that made me feel better. So this is all supported by the voice actresses, who are quite good. Um, but the subtle changes to the character models are also important. The way that Chloe now has the red-eyed, uh, slightly shiny look. Um, that's, uh, that's a good change to make this scene feel more emotional. I forgot what she said. You don't want to hear this, but you're still here. Alive. With me. And that is no accident. You're right. I don't want to hear this. Chloe, I can't do this out on my own. I need you with me. And Rachel needs you. So I thought they were going to pull aside there with like a screeching tire. They didn't. Um, but that would have been perfectly in tune with an escalation. Instead, they went with a de-escalation. Both of those choices are valid, but you have to understand what you're doing when you build tension and what you're going to do with that tension at the end of whatever you're doing. You always want to use that tension for something, and in this case, what they've done is they've left us with some nervousness about Chloe and Max's relationship in general by raising that tension up and then not resolving anything. They also used a very neat depth of field trick right there to bring us into the scene with a focal snap, and that's really nice. Here we're staring at the picture just before Chloe's dad died. I wonder what's going to happen. I said before that when you resolve your inner turmoil, your powers often change to reflect your new inner turmoil. We're going to go ahead and stop here for the day. Uh, it's a very nice breaking point, although it's a little bit short in terms of the time. So uh, I think this is a good place to stop, and in the next episode, we're going to pick up with Max's new power.